Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, thanks for joining me. I'm Katie and I'm going to be using gouache. So a couple of videos ago I tried out some new gouache paints. Now I'm not an expert with gouache and most work I've done using them in the past hasn't been great and that's either been down to using them wrong, buying really cheap ones or not very amazing quality ones. But for me personally, it's been hard to find a good fit with gouache anyway. But these particular ones surprised me, so I'm going to stick with these for now. Using gouache compared to acrylic, for example, will create a nice flat image without any reflections, which means they'll be great to photograph and produce prints or posters from. Acrylic can be a little shiny and sometimes it won't lie flat on the surface without introducing additives or matte glazes. And right now, I don't really want to be tinkering around with different formulations. I like how opaque the gouache is, and sometimes acrylic can still have a bit of transparency to it, depending on the colours and the make. So, the painting I'm doing is a dragon, and I'm quite partial to drawing and painting dragons. And as I wanted to do a vibrant, colourful picture, a dragon fits the bill, right? I've got a few pictures on my social media and I'll add the links to the video description if you want to check out the other things I make. My favourite types to draw are quite docile, gentle, dopey looking dragons with chunky faces and windy bodies. And this one's no exception. My inspiration for its pose. So how can I put it? You know when you see big dogs like Great Danes fall asleep on the spot. You've seen the videos and the memes. They've usually got their heads propped on a sofa and the back end propped on something else with the forepaws either dangling or curled in a collapsed mess. Well that's what's inspired this one. He's taking a snooze high up in the clouds and before he can get fully comfortable it's too late. And it's sleepy time, his mouth's open, there's definitely a snore, his tongue's out and drool could be imminent. And the colours I've used are mostly purples, blues and teals, just to set this sleepy scene. The first layer of scales will be little dots and they'll just be a dark colour that I've made from the teal and it's just enough to add a little depth but not making it look too three dimensional. I'll also be going in with larger circles and adding more prominent scales by adding a mid-tone and a pure white and this also adds subtle depth. As you can see, adding the variation of sizes for the scales, it just makes it look a little less flat. Even though I want the image to look flat, it still just adds a bit more detail in and breaks up the image itself a little.
as you can see adding the highlights to the scales just really makes them pop out a little bit more and adds that definition and I really like how this is coming along I really enjoy using these paints Another thing I enjoy drawing and painting are chunky bar shaped clouds. The paint really suits the design as even the shadow and highlights will add depth but keep with the blocked out sky and moon in the background. This all ties up with the features I'll be adding to the dragon. For his main spinal ridges and his tail, I decided to use a contrasting colour, which is why I went for a peach. And what I've done to make it look a little bit more three dimensional is use a darker tone for the shadows. And I will go in there and add highlights to it as well. But I really like the contrast there. It just adds a pop of colour to it and allows your eye to follow the form of the dragon as he slumped on the clouds. For his tongue, I've obviously used red, but I decided to keep it vibrant so the details for the teeth wouldn't be lost. Another thing I like to draw on dragons is the teeth. Even if they've got massive gnashes, I like to keep them blunt and I think they can look quite comical, especially when they've got a massive jaw like this one has. I really wanted this dragon's wings to look really nice and soft so I decided to paint them a very light gold colour and then just add the shadows and details in with darker tones and going over the highlights with white. I think they look quite cute. The thing I'm enjoying most about using this gouache is just how opaque they are. I mean, obviously that's the idea with gouache, unless you do use them like a watercolour. Now, I do have to add a little bit of water to make them easier to paint with, and finding the right ratio to do that can be a little bit tricky, because sometimes it might be a little bit streaky, or sometimes it might still be a little bit too thick and hard to paint with. However, these do layer really nicely and as long as there isn't too much water in what I've mixed up, it doesn't reactivate the layers below, which surprised me and I think that's where I've stumbled before using the gouache. I tend to reactivate the layers underneath or it just ends up looking this awful streaky mess. But with these ones, I'm quite happy with them. I think I've got more control over them than perhaps what I'd have with the tubes. So this is why I like these paints.
also to make my dragon friend stand out from his background a little bit more I have gone around and done the outlines with darker tones I've again I've avoided using black I think it would just be a little bit too harsh for this so using a darker version of what's already laid down on particular areas really just makes this image pop out but not too much if that makes sense I decided to repaint the inside of the crescent moon as the original colour was just too similar to the dragon and it was beginning to look a little bit lost even though I'd already gone around with the outline. So adding a little bit more ultramarine to the mix to match the sky seems to work a lot better and I'm quite happy that I made the decision to do that. I'm also really happy that adding some pure white to the tops of the clouds just again gives that slight three-dimensional feel and it just brings the whole image forwards and makes it stand out from what is in the background. I'm really happy that I chose to do that too. And I'm just going around adding highlights to a few other areas and tidying it up before I add the starry sky. And as you can see, I used a plate to mask the area and then splattered the stars on. So we're all done and I'm really happy with how this painting's turned out. I think I'm getting the hang of gouache. I've still got a lot to learn but for this particular style I think it's worked out well. Let me know what you think in the comments and if you'd also like me to paint some more of these types of dragons. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye!